Triumph Dolomite Sprint was an ideal car for the team. Jerry had already gained a highly successful season's experience with a sprint, winning both production saloon car championships in 1978. Also, the car was fitted as standard with the technologically advanced face-saving Triplex 1020 windscreen. The first race of the season was to be at the team's home base at Silverstone, where the conditions were really more suitable for running a powerboat race. In these wet conditions, you're going to be up with the bigger category cars, I imagine, aren't you? Well, we'd like to hope so, anyway. This meeting last year was won outright by a Dolomite Sprint with Tony Dron driving, and I came second overall and won my class in a Capri, so uh, um, we like to think that maybe we, we could be right up there. But what about this Mazda? Are you going to be seriously competing with that, or are you just going to... Well, what's going to happen? Well, we don't know what that's like in the wet at all, and it has yet to be raced. It's only practised, um, and its practice times were very fast, you know. It's going to be good competition. The Dolomites have had it their own way in this class for a long time, so maybe it's no bad thing to, uh, you know, engender some life into the class. And what about your teammate this year, Jerry? Uh... Well, Rex Greenslade is technical ed editor of uh, Motor. And he's been racing for a few years now, not as many as me, but quite a few years. And uh, he's going very, very well. Uh, Rex, it's an hour to go before the race. Did you get pre-race nerves? How are you feeling at the moment? Uh... Nervous. <laughs> uh, I think that uh, you're bound to get a little bit nervous. I, I wouldn't say that I'm nervous uh, in that I'm frightened or apprehensive, but I obviously I um, get a little tweaked up. I want to get on with it. Right from the start, the team was in trouble, for not only was the Mazda RX-7 sports car much faster than expected, but the experimental radial ply wet tyres that were being used for the first time caused tremendous problems. The tread began to chunk early in the race, and the construction of the tyre caused instability in weaving that was apparent even on the straight. The two triplex cars trailed the Mazda in second and third places in their class. Rex, with his headlamps blazing, led Jerry by the end of the first lap, after initially being outdragged from the start line. With the controversial Mazda far ahead and Jerry retiring, his Dolomite undrivable on the new tyres, the task of upholding Team Honor fell to Rex Greenslade, who diced throughout the race with Barry Williams in his Magnum. Eventually, Rex had to be content with third place as his tyres, too, started to disintegrate. Apart from the Tri-Central Championship, the team also took part in the Tourist Trophy Race at Silverstone. Regular drivers Jerry and Rex were joined by Chuck Nicholson and rally man Roger Clark, who flew himself in direct from the Manx Rally. Jerry, how do you fancy chances then today? Well, you can never tell in a long race like this. 107 laps is quite a way to go, but uh, we're first and second in class. So, um, you know, we hope it's going to stay that way together. Brakes are the, uh, the weak thing uh, for long distance racing in the Dolomite Sprint. Got the performance and the road holding. As long as the brakes stay together and the drivers keep it on the island, it should be OK. Who's going to be the main competition then? I mean, uh... Uh, there's the other Dolomite, there's the Vauxhall, there's a couple of Fords, so uh, there's enough there. But in a long race like this, there's no, it won't be very cotton thrust, would it? It's just a matter of keeping going, is it? And, uh... Well, you know, if you start racing with each other too hard, then you lose your brakes, you wear your tyres out too quickly or run out of fuel, so uh, it's a matter of cons conservation. I was going to help without Jim sitting there telling which way to turn and so on. Yeah. Well, it's a one-way street, it's all right. <laughs>
I am looking forward very much to it. It would be nice to um, actually finish one, I hope. So are you going to be dicing with them today, you think? Oh, all of them. Definitely yes. Jerry. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I think, you know, we'll, we'll have a good race. We won't be dicing that much until towards the very end. Because we've got to make it last somehow. <laughs> right. But, uh, who's uh, your co-driver? Who, who's driving with you? T Terry Lamb Frankie. <laughs> Actually, he's my grandfather. This little car is going to do all right. It's going to catch up with all those little boys who think they're going to go quick in front of us. That Mr. Marshall and Rex Greenslade, all of which think they're going to do all right. You look at the end of the race and see where this car is. <laughs> but that, that, there are some bike races where they... Re Regular VW golf driver Richard Lloyd teamed up for the TT with motorcycle ex-world champion Barry Sheen, who was making his long-awaited four-wheel racing debut. I'm doing this because I wanted to do it, you know, because after having a rush around in the car, I enjoyed it. And it's like a, a really nice, non-pressure, fun weekend for me. Is it your first four-wheel? Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, first four-wheel thing. And it took a bit of getting used to a front-wheel drive car, but uh, it's nice, you know, I got round within, uh, I don't know, I got under a second off the old lap record and within half a second of Richard's time, so I'm, I'm pleased. Good. What are the team tactics for the afternoon? When are you going to take over? Um, Richard's doing the first stint and then he's going to do 32 laps and then I get in and do 32 laps and then um, Derek Bell is going to get in and do the, the last bit. So I do the middle bit. And if uh, if something should happen that we, we've got a good lead in the class, then if I want to, I can carry on and do the, the rest of it. Who's the competition? Who, who are you sort of racing against? Uh, you know, would you think I was really stupid if I said I don't know? <laughs> Not at all. Yeah. On the flag, the two triplex Dolomite sprints circulated at the head of the class, with Jerry leading Chuck Nicholson and the Wizzo Williams, Tony Land, Frankie Vauxhall in third place. Up in front, the three BMW CSLs scrap for the lead, making their last major appearance in international motorsport. third distance the cars start to come in for routine pit stops and driver changes. Barry Williams hands over to his grandfather whilst Roger Clark waits expectantly for his turn. Watch out for the traffic, but no problem. So you, you, another driver change. Roger's now in it. As Clark drives away, the other Dolomite sprint is overdue, and word comes that it stopped out on the circuit, leaving Greenslade without a drive. Uh, there's no outside assistance at all. Uh, so if you run out of fuel, we can't do anything about it anyway. The Triumph Dolomite Sprint team are not the only ones in trouble. Barry Sheen with the Akai Golf slows right down and he limps back to the pits with suspected drive shaft problems. After a thorough check by the mechanics, it's obvious that Sheen's car racing debut has come to a premature end. Meanwhile, Roger Clark's stint also comes to an end. He returns to the pits to hand back to Jerry. Fine. Yeah. Lovely. Nice drive, mate. Okay. Yeah, really consistent, though. 48-2, 48-3 all the time. Good. That was pretty good, that was. Okay. You feel all right? Yeah, fine. Yeah, good. 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 Very easy. Make a change. 
Despite running well during the race, Jerry is also soon to retire. But this time, it's exclusion by race officials, after an incident in the pits is reported to them by rival team manager Alan Foster. Pretty, the car was going beautifully. Wasn't, you know, hadn't missed a beat all day. But the starter was a bit hot, and um, it was jammed. So we rocked it in top gear to, to free it off. Yeah, yes, what you saw, yeah. And uh, eventually it, it freed it enough and I was able to start it. But in fact, it wasn't push started, but they deem it as a push start because it was done with outside assistance. Anyway, we were protesting and disqualified. I didn't make the rules that you mustn't be push starting. After all, otherwise, we could all have all sorts of things which, uh, which aren't in the rules. It isn't a question of being unsportsmanlike at all about it. I'm a great friend of Jerry's, as you know. So, whilst the TT was a disappointing outing for the Triplex team, the race marked yet another victory for the BMW CSL. And what better way to go into retirement than on a winning note? Double production saloon car champion for 1978, Jerry Marshall's been attempting to repeat this success during 1979. But sadly, a horrific accident at the Silverstone Grand Prix meeting prevented him competing in all the rounds. However, by the final round at Thruxton, he was back in business. This is uh, what we call production saloons, um, which although the cars look the same, they're Triumph Dolomite Sprints, just the same. Uh, these have something around about 140 horsepower, as opposed to the 215, 220 horsepower of the Group 1 cars. Um, they have to run on road tyres, <coughs> you know, just as you go to the shops in, and standard gear ratios, standard engine, everything. The only thing you're allowed to change are the brake materials, you know, harder pads and so on, and um, um, different shock absorbers. Other than that, it's an absolutely standard car. Now, uh, Juliet, you've been racing all season in, the, in this class, and have you? No, I've only been doing selected races at MCD circuits, in fact. Um, so I haven't really stuck to any one championship at all. But this is an MCD circuit, though. No, well, this is a sneaky one, because I missed uh, two Alton Park races when I was out in Australia. And so I haven't actually told my boss that I'm here today. <laughs> What were you doing in Australia, Juliet? I was doing the press work for somebody who was racing at Bathurst, doing the Hardy for Rodeo 1000. Who was that? Mark Thatcher. You're going to be watching the saloon car race this afternoon? Oh, yeah, sure, yes, I shall be watching. There's the Sunbeam Talbot going and uh, all the Jerry's dolly dollies, so um, I should be watching with interest. Who reckon's going to win? Oh, well, it's difficult to say, you know. Um, I think Andy and Tony have been very close this year in these um, two Opals. Um, Andy's a little bit quick in practice, but um, Tony's got a lot of experience and I know him quite well. He's a wily character. Um, he'll be close. So do all these stars mean that you must be uh, sort of fairly well up in the championship then, uh, Tony? Yeah, I think we're uh, second or third or something. <laughs> Mr. Marshall's leading us, I'm afraid. Mind you, Jerry's done very well this year, I think, considering his problems, <laughs> end over enders. I don't like those at my age. But, I mean, he's in a different class to you, though, I mean... Yes, but um, he's got a different class with the Dolomites, and I've got a lot more uh, Opals to take care of. We're each in each other's race, if you know what I mean, although it's all amalgamated. So how did practice go for you this morning? Not very good. I think we're second fastest, and I don't like that. To who? Andy Rouse. What sort of season have you had, in fact? Very good season. We've really enjoyed it. Uh, so far, we've won ten races, a uh, couple of seconds. But really, it's been very good. Who's been your nearest uh, sort of competitors? There's a fellow called Tony Lanfranchi, who's uh, always on our tail. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> can't say anything else really, can you then? Uh, but what about uh, Jerry Marsh and the Dolomite Sprint, the car you used, similar to what you used to drive? That's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, Jerry's always up the front, I mean, certainly in his class, and very often overall, he very often starts from the front row of the grid, and even leads for most of the first lap, because he's very quick off the line. Off the line, Jerry straight away takes up position behind Lanfranchi and Rouse in the two much bigger and more powerful Opal Commodores. Around the sweeps of Thruxton's fast curves, Jerry's consummate skill and the agility of the triplex Dolomite sprint keeps the opposition in sight, catching up on the bends but losing out on the straights.
the chicane for the first time and Rouse takes Lanfranchi for the lead. Whilst on the exit, Jerry promptly puts him down to third and sets off in pursuit of the leader, but with little chance of catching the more powerful car. Jerry's skill enables him to hold off both Tony Lanfranchi and the rest of the pack snapping at his heels. But soon the superior power of the larger cars on Thruxton's fast sweeps and straights finally put him down the field. But still well in command of his class and the championship. Approaching the chicane for the last time, Rouse has it in the bag. But helped by an errant back marker, Lanfranchi has other ideas and snatches the lead to win. Jerry is secure in fifth place overall to win his class. <laughs> Good old, the golden oldies do it again. That was nice. yeah, yeah, yeah. The film will be fantastic, I tell you. I hope that it shows you got your moment and everything. I hope they didn't get it on the last lap. Well, unfortunately, we haven't got the driver's eye view of the last lap, but from the side of the track, Lanfranchi's superior roadcraft is shown to the full. However, it's not entirely appreciated by everyone, least of all Andy Rouse. He suddenly decides he's going to drive four wheels all across the kerb. So he comes flying across the kerb. Nearly ran me in the front, I had to brake to miss him, so did the Dolomite, and of course he beat me to the line. And what do you say about a goal like that? Tony, congratulations on winning the race there. Thank you. Very exciting at the end. Yeah, it was a bit unfortunate for Andy, somebody got in the way and he didn't see me, and you know, we'd either had a bump or I had to take to the grass a bit. He, he's not, he's a bit upset about it. Um, Andy is? Yes. Is he? Yes. Oh dear. And he, well, he said there were some team plans or something like that. You're going to finish 1-2 or something like that. We don't have any team plans. He's won 10 races this year and I've won 19, you know, and that's a team plan. Very good at the start, but after a, three or four laps, I got very lonely, of course. I just couldn't quite stay with the uh, three-litre cars. But I made them work for a couple of laps anyway. Yeah. It was great. Really enjoyed it. Dolomite uh, has been great all season and, uh, you know, it goes out in a blaze of glory. A season of mixed fortunes then for the Team Triplex Dolomite Sprints, with Jerry Marshall winning his class in both production saloon car championships. Rex Greenslade won his class in the Tri-Central Series twice and finished sixth overall and second in class in this major British saloon car championship. All in all, a highly satisfying first season's association for BL Motorsport, Esso, Motor Magazine and Triplex.